Okay, so biological catalysts. Many chemical reactions can be speeded up by substances called catalysts. A catalyst alters the rate of a chemical reaction without being changed itself. So within any living organism, chemical reactions take place all the time. They are sometimes called metabolic reactions. Almost every metabolic reaction is controlled by catalysts called enzymes. Without enzymes, the reactions would take place very slowly or not at all. Enzymes ensure that the rates of metabolic reactions are great enough to sustain life. First of all, I would like you guys to know what is the meaning of metabolic reaction. So the basic is that all of the chemical reactions in our body, in the living organism or in biological uh, in, in biology um, are basically the chemical reactions taking, taking place inside the cell. It has two parts, catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is the process by which large molecules are broken into um, simpler molecules, complex molecules are broken into simpler molecules and anabolism is the chemical process by which simpler uh, large molecules are made from simpler molecules okay these are chemical reactions and these chemical reactions are very slow it requires an agent called catalyst to speed up the rate of chemical reaction but the um, important thing about catalyst is that the catalyst do not itself take part in the chemical reaction it just speeds up the um, process of the reaction okay <clears throat> catalyst a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction and is not changed by reaction enzymes proteins that function as biological catalysts in biology the catalysts are called enzyme not all catalysts are enzymes but all enzymes are catalysts so the cat, um, enzymes in our uh, catalysts in our body are called enzymes. For example, inside the alimentary canal, large molecules are broken down to simpler ones in the process of digestion. So this is actually digestion, which you will know in the later chapter of nutrition. Okay, these reactions are speeded up by enzymes. A different enzyme is needed for each kind of food. For example, starch is digested to sugar maltose by an enzyme called amylase. Protein is digested to amino acids by proteases. So enzymes are specific in their work. That is a specific type of enzyme speeds up the chemical reaction of a um, specific um, chemical reaction. Okay. So here, um, maltose is like... Um, simpler than starch and amino acids are simpler than proteins that is many amino acids makes a protein and many maltose makes a starch you will know detail about this in your a levels and you will also get an idea in your o levels in the later chapters these enzymes are also found in plants for example in germinating seeds where they digest the food stores for the growing seedling so what are germinating seeds? You know, the seeds which are um, um, growing into a new plant. Okay, so this is actually the process of germination. Many seeds contain stores of starch. As the seed soaks up water, the amylase is activated and breaks down the starch to maltose. The maltose is soluble and is transported to the embryo in the seed. The embryo uses it to provide energy for growth and also to provide glucose molecules that can be strung together to make cellulose molecules for the cells of new cells produced as it grows. So what is this embryo? Um, basically, the embryo, um, embryo is actually developing. You know, it is in a state of development and the embryo, um, uh, the embryo is actually turns into the fetus in humans. And here, the embryo um, is actually um, what's gonna grow like into the plant, okay? And you'll also learn about this in the chapter of reproduction. But for now, just understand this embryo is something 
which develops into the um, adult or what is being grown okay another enzyme which speeds up the breakdown of substance is catalase catalase works inside the cells of living organisms both animals and plants for example in liver cells or pod cells it breaks down hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen this is necessary because hydrogen peroxide is produced in many of the chemical reactions which takes place inside cells hydrogen peroxide is a very dangerous substance and must be broken down immediately because if hydrogen peroxide stays inside the cell, it will damage the cell. But if it is broken down into oxygen and water, which is not dangerous or harmful to the cell, um, the cell has a greater um, probability for survival. Okay. Not all enzymes help to break things down. Many enzymes help to make larger molecules from small ones. One example of this kind of enzyme is starch phosphorylase, which will starch molecules from glucose molecules inside plant cells. So much easy so glucose many glucose molecules make starch molecules so as i said earlier both anabolism and catabolism requires enzymes and this is actually an anabolic reaction because simpler molecules glucose is being formed into starch okay and this is a chemical reaction Naming enzymes. Enzymes are named according to the reaction that they catalyze. For example, enzymes which catalyze the breakdown of carbohydrates are called carbohydrates. If they break down protein, they are called proteases. If they break down fats, they are called lipases. So, why are not fatases? That's because the scientific name or the biological name of fats are lipids. So, why are they called lipids and like um, how what are fats? Fats are actually um, um, the combination of fatty acids and glycerol you will learn this in your um, A levels yeah so now is actually the basic time for you sometimes they are given more specific names than this for example we have seen that carbohydrates breaks don't start into amylase one that breaks on maltose is called maltase one that breaks on sucrose is called sucrase nothing much to explain here the lock and key mechanism an enzyme works by allowing the molecule of the substance on which it is acting to fit into it. The fit has um, to be perfect. The enzyme is like a lock into which another molecule fits like a key. We said that the shape of the enzyme and the shape of the substrate are complementary to one another. Okay, so here what is happening? <coughs> Say for example, I'm going to give you an example of digestion where proteins are digested into amino acids larger molecules macromolecules is being broken into its monomers amino acids so what is monomers now this term is new for you but it is not needed in your o level so basically monomers are basically um, the substances which join together to form the larger substance called macromolecule okay so this is an enzyme Say for example, um, this is an enzyme. This is the enzyme. So this is the enzyme, and say so for example, um, this is a protein. In a cell, you cannot usually find just protein, there are other substances. Say, for example, this is carbohydrate. Say, for example, um, um, this may be. Um, something else like hydrogen peroxide
Okay, so the carbohydrate doesn't fit into the enzyme protease. The carbohydrate do not match into the enzyme protease. Oh, yeah. And this site, there is a special name. This is called the active site. Okay, so the carbohydrate do not match the shape or is complementary in shape of the active site, neither the hydrogen peroxide. So, protease will not catalyze the chemical reactions of these macro molecules. Okay. So, since only proteins are complementary to proteases, okay, so this is actually the um, lock and key. So, why is this called key? Think about it. We are putting the key in the lock. Only specific uh, key will fit into its um, complementary lock. You cannot um, uh, use every keys to unlock every locks. Okay. So this lock and this is the key. And since they have matched. Okay, so. Drawing is not 100% accurate, this is just to make you guys understand. Okay, so this is called the enzyme substrate complex. Oh, I forgot to mention, the protein is the substrate. Okay. A substrate is a substance or um, a molecule which after reaction becomes the product and the substrate and product are actually different so this is called the enzyme <coughs> substrate complex this is called the enzyme substrate complex it is actually an intermediate form um, between the chemical reaction of digestion so what does intermediate form means it means that this is not the initial form this is also not the final form it happens in middle what happens after this is that the bonds are broken down and so they are broken down into their complementary um, sorry um, their corresponding amino acids so these are Actually, the amino acids and these are the products. So, enzyme substrate, enzyme substrate complex, and these are the products. That is, this protein macromolecule has been digested into its uh, corresponding amino acids. Okay. So, this hypothesis, that is, um, the scientists, they guessed that this might happen. This is actually called the lock and key hypothesis. And then after um, doing many practical experiments, the hypothesis was correct. Okay. So... Um, <clears throat> the active set, the chemical reaction always involves one substance changing into another. 
the substrate into the products, protein into the amino acids. <clears throat> in enzyme controlled reaction, the substance which is present at the beginning of the reaction is called the substrate. The substance which is made by the reaction is called the product. For example, in saliva, there is an enzyme called amylase that catalyzes the breakdown of starch into complex sugar molecule, maltose. In this reaction, starch is the substrate and maltose is the product. An amylase molecule has a dent in it called the active side, like I gave an example. This has a shape that is complementary to the shape of part of a starch molecule. This has a shape that is complementary to the protein molecule. In my example, the starch fits into the active site of amylase, forming an enzyme substrate complex, just like here. When the starch molecules in it uh, is in the active site, the enzyme breaks it apart. Yeah. All enzymes have active site. Each enzyme has an active site that exactly fits its substrate. This means that each enzyme can only act on a particular kind of substrate. Amylase, for example, cannot break down protein molecules because they don't fit into its active site. Neither can protease to amino acids or carburetes or hydrogen peroxide or um, any other macromolecules um, or maybe lipids. Okay. So, okay. So there is an example the same way I showed you. It's the same thing. Now enzymes have few properties. Properties of enzymes. So properties of enzymes. All enzymes are proteins. This may seem rather odd because some enzymes actually digest proteins. So yes, all enzymes are proteins. Enzymes are made inactive by high temperatures this is because they are, um, they are protein molecules which are damaged by heat. So, in your chapter, um, biological molecules, you've learned that, um, no, no, wait, in your A levels, you learn that um, proteins actually have some structures primary secondary tertiary and quaternary and that the structures primary um, the secondary structures uh, especially the secondary structure also the tertiary structure are uh, and also the quaternary structure are held together by hydrogen bonds in higher temperature these hydrogen bonds are broken down and so the enzyme loses its shape and so it is no longer um, complementary to the shape. That's why the protein cannot fit into the proteins and so the enzymes are said to be denatured. Okay, for your O-levels this much information is enough for you. Enzymes work best at particular temperature. Enzymes are found in the human body usually work best at about 37 degrees Celsius. Enzymes works best at particular at particular pH. pH is a measure of how acid or alkaline a solution is. You have learned it in your chemistry. Some enzymes work best in acid condition, other work best in neutral or alkaline conditions. Um, in your A levels, you learn, or in your chemistry, you already have learned <coughs> that amino acids carry charges. And that if the uh, optimum pH, their environment is not in their optimum pH, charges are disrupted. Due to these opposite charges, um, there is an attraction between the amino acids molecules and it helps to keep the shape of the molecule in place. Due to um, unfavorable pH, since they will lose their charges or their charges will be disrupted their attraction will also be disrupted and so again their shape will be changed so that the their substrate is no longer complementary temperature and enzyme activity 
Most chemical reaction happen faster at higher temperature. This is because the molecules have more kinetic energy, they are moving around faster, so they bump into each other more frequently. We know that if we give heat energy, they receive kinetic energy and they start moving faster. And the faster they move, the faster is the probability that they will collide with each other and the substrate will meet its enzyme in the active site. Okay. This means that at higher temperature, an enzyme is likely to bump into uh, its substrate molecule more often than at lower temperatures. They also hit each other with more energy, so the reaction is more likely to take place. However, enzymes are damaged by high temperature. For most human enzymes, this begins to happen from about 40 degrees Celsius upwards. As the temperature increases beyond this, the enzyme molecules start to lose their shape. The active side no longer fits perfectly with the mm, substrate. The enzyme is said to be denatured. It can no longer catalyze the reaction. The temperature at which enzyme works fastest is called the optimum temperature. Different enzymes have different optimum temperatures. For example, em enzymes from the human digestive system generally have optimum temperature of 37. Enzymes from plants mm, often have optimum temperature of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Enzymes from bacteria that live in hot, hot springs may have optimum temperatures as high as 75 degrees Celsius. Now there is also an important thing um, to learn. Let's move a rabbit. After doing many experiments, the scientists found out that if you plot a graph of enzyme activity, the y-axis against Temperature in the x axis, the graph comes something like this. This may not start from the origin, this may start from this. And that the optimum temperature, this is the optimum temperature, may have different values for different enzymes. This is the optimum temperature. That's because at this temperature, the enzyme activity is the highest. As the temperature increases, the enzyme activity increases as they receive more kinetic energy and they are moving um, with greater speed. You know, kinetic energy is converted into speed in your physics, you have learned. And so there is more probability that they are going to collide with each other and that a reaction is going to happen. And But after their optimum temperature, after they have reached their optimum temperature, if you keep increasing the temperature, the enzymes become denatured and so their activity decreases until becoming zero. Now the values of this temperature varies from enzymes to enzymes. The same graph is actually the same graph comes if we repeat this experiment with different pH. As the pH increases, the enzyme activity increases because the charges will be at a more favorable position for the um, pH of a solution affects the charges of the um, uh, amino acids. They are, and they will keep increasing until reaching their optimum pH. And then further increase in pH will cause their activity to become reduced because of um, you know, their shape will be changed. I have just told you now. Yeah, nothing much tough here to understand. pH and enzyme activity. The pH of a solution affects the shape of an enzyme. Most enzymes are their correct shape at a pH of about 7. That is neutral. If the pH becomes very acidic or very alkaline, then they are denatured. This means that the active side no longer fills the substrate, so the enzyme can no longer catalyze its reaction. Some enzymes have an optimum pH that is not neutral. 
For example, there is a protease enzyme in the human stomach that has an optimum pH of 2. This is because we have hydrochloric acid in our stomachs. Hydrochloric acid is very strong acid. Okay. Now, hydrochloric acid is actually a strong acid. This is um, counted as a strong acid. This protease must be able to work well in these very acidic conditions. Okay, so yeah, and there's a study tip. Do not say that enzymes are killed by high temperatures. Enzymes are chemicals, not living organisms. So they cannot be killed. They can be denatured. Okay, and denatured means they are um, not in their original nature, and so they cannot work. Yeah. So. This is actually the end of the talk.